guy in this red Peterbilt was backing into this space. And that's the space over there. And then this white Volvo barged in from around the other side and is trying to steal his parking space. And now this good Samaritan is helping telling him that the other, see now the Peterbilt's trying to continue his back in. Yeah, see now the good Samaritan saved the day. See the Volvo snuck in from over, he ran over the scale. That's what we have to deal with out here. So now the world is good. <laughs> the red, uh, the red Peterbilt gets his space and continues his back in. So the award goes to the Good Samaritan from the Bible, over there for saving the day. Ah, the trucking life. Now he's going to go over there probably and try to park in the middle of the fuel island or the driveway. No, he's leaving. With his tail between his legs. Give him, uh, give him a hand, ladies and gentlemen. situation probably about once a month and those are the ones that just I see it really is parking wars out here to try to find parking places that guy was willing to cut off that other guy just so he could get in there and get that parking space this guy I know, he claims that he was in Amarillo at the Petro there and he was backing into a space similar to what we just saw and another guy actually ran this truck into his truck to block him from getting in the space. So my friend got out of his truck, he pulled the guy out of the truck and beat him up right in the parking lot. This is what he said, and then he said he went to jail for it. I don't, I don't think we should go that far beating people up to get parking spaces, but the parking wars out here have created uh, a nightmare in some cases. When we get to the point where we're uh, pulling out our trucks, pulling guys out of their trucks for uh, stealing our parking places, then it's gone too far. Well, let's get out of here and head over and make our pickup. Over in Lancaster, Texas. And Lancaster is a... I call it the Fontana of trucking. It's where all the trucks are in Dallas. Not all, but many, most, lots, tons. It's where a lot of the truck stops are. Let's head over there and get our pickup and then we'll be on our way. I'd like to thank you for riding along, by the way. I'm Indiana Jack. Craziest thing, craziest thing, they're not accepting any uh, empties here because they're moving at this company today. So, 
they want me to take this trailer over to some other place and then come back here and get the loaded trailer. I guess that makes sense, but it would have been good to know that first. You know, hey, drop off your empty somewhere else and then come back here and pick up the load. All right, let's get out of here. It's 10 miles away. And that's not that far, but I have to pay for the fuel to get over there. So, gotta do a big giant U-turn here. Let's head over to that uh, new location and drop off this empty and then we're going to come back here and get our loaded trailer. Alright, we're getting rid of this empty. to the place where we were, 15 miles away, and get the uh, actual trailer picked up. Boy, it was tough finding this place. It took me over the neighborhoods where churches and schools were. The address is correct on all the maps. But the actual location where you come into the building is way a mile away on a different street. So they're never going to fix it. So trucks are always going to be going to the residential neighborhood that's on the other side because that's what the address is. is a much bigger warehouse they have here and uh, so I imagine I'll be coming here quite often and when I came in right up here they don't have a guard shack yet it's just two guards that are chatting and I went right by them I didn't know that I should stop there because they were chatting had someone been out there and told me to stop I would have stopped so they ch both chased after me in their cars and they're with the lights shining and everything. I think I have to sign out here. But when you see two people chatting and talking, you don't think that they're that you're supposed to do anything there. Let's see what they want me to do. Thumbs up. See, now they paid attention to me that time. See, now this address, this entrance right here, is the correct address. I mean, it's the address that they should give. This street up here, Danielle. In 700 feet, turn left on Daniel West Daniel Dale. Dale Road. Down there is the residential place with high schools and convents and hospitals. That's where the address they, they sent me to, and so I went down there where all that is. widen 
the street too. And let's get going. We gotta make an emergency stop first before we go over there and get that loaded trailer. Emergency. The emergency has been fulfilled. For you, for those of you that watch the things that I do right here at Adventures in Trucking, this is the parking lot where I filmed the truck tour when I originally started making videos on YouTube. I did a truck tour of Old Red right here at the Target in Dallas. That's just an example of the mindless trivia that I tell you about here. The reason I brought it up is a lot of people ask me questions about Old Red and they, they don't realize that I've made a truck tour about her and the details if you go to the beginning of my page and sort YouTube correctly, then you can find it easy. It's just, I think it says, truck tour, Volvo truck tour, something like that. Not the newest ones, but the original truck tour, which has the details. She looks, she looks much newer then, of course, because she was four years newer. Watching Adventures in Trucking with Indiana Jack. We are in the actual slime pit of the Dallas area, which is Lancaster. And we got our load on board. Left in 500 We're going to stop at one of the bright spots here, and that's the pilot. They try to keep the slime maggots out of Continue there. Continue on this road for 12 miles. I'm sure that's not easy to do. The reason I say that at night. This is just lined up with prostitutes and drug dealers. And it's just like uh, Atlanta. It's really uh, not, not a place you want to be at night. But I have to get a sandwich to take with me on the road. And this is the closest place. So our drive is only five hours. So I don't know if we'll stop or not. In the day, this is a pretty nice little area. At 700 feet, turn right on Vanderpool Avenue, and then turn right on 700 feet. We'll top off our fuel also here at the Good Pilot in Dallas. A light in the midst of darkness. the shipper, or the receiver rather, and they don't take the delivery early, but they said I could park there 
are at their facility. And it looks like there's restaurants and stuff there to go, so... You and I are going to be camping out at the back of the of a shopping center all night. I even asked her if there was a place to do that, and she said yes. So. We only have 19 more miles, and we'll be hitting our delivery point. Well, we've made it. The thing about Texas, notice the red paint on the uh, curbs. They don't allow any parking where, the, where it's red. And every shopping center is painted with that red. So we'll just have to hope that where I'm going, it's not painted red. And there's a nice rainstorm in that direction, which would cool everything down because right now it's 108. Uh oh. I can squeeze through here, but that other one's shut down. Hopefully they'll open it up for us. Maybe we can just stay right here. I doubt it. Well, it's 110, it says, so that means it's probably really 105 outside. So, uh, guess who's idling? Huh? Guess who? I'm trying to get those storm clouds to come over here, but it just it doesn't look like it's going to happen. That they're moving like southeast, and we're uh, not in that direction. Oh well. Well, here we are, the blue uh, blue dot down there, and we have a Mexican restaurant there, and I've been watching it. And the people are lined up. They just keep coming and coming and coming. So I'm probably going to go there and get a burrito or something. But we also have an IHOP or a sports clips if I need a haircut. Well, I'm worried if I idle all night. Those are houses right there. So I'm worried if the uh, idling sound keeps them awake. I don't like to get waken up or woken up in the middle of the night with a mad neighbor telling me to turn my engine off. So The thing is, it's so hot they have their air conditioning on, so they got their windows closed, so I, I think we'll be okay.
looks like I picked the right place, but I won't know until I actually taste the food. What's up, everybody? I'm California Kurt, and you're watching Adventures in Trucking with Indiana Jack. Well, I'm looking at the map here, and I can see there's a giant thunderstorm coming in, so I'm holding on. You guys hold on, too. Man, this is pretty scary. Look at that out there. Hold on. Look quiet after the storm. Now it's completely quiet in the morning time. That was quite a storm last night. You're always afraid at first, and then once it storms for a while, then you just go right to sleep. At, at least that's what happened to me. You always wonder if it's going to be the storm of storms. <laughs> and then it kind of, you know, soothes you and rocks you right to sleep in a truck. waiting for them to open. Well, they're not answering their door yet. I know they're in there because earlier I saw them all smoking outside there. So I'll give them another half hour. Well, look what happened when we opened it up. There's nothing in here, just a couple of boxes at the front. I could have put that in my pickup truck. Well, it's hard to believe that that's all that's in there. They're gonna let this guy go first, even though he has more than I do. And I've been here since yesterday. Boy, I really complain too, but... You know, there are customers, so how obnoxious can I get? I thought the whole trailer was full and it's just one or two boxes. I can't believe companies send a big giant trailer, tractor and trailer for like 10 boxes. Huh. Oh well, we're paid the same, it doesn't matter. All right, well, it only took them a minute, so here we go. Back and down into the hole with this huge, huge load of stuff. I should have just brought my pickup truck on this and then I wouldn't have had to pay all the fuel for this. You know, that, like I told you, they were moving that warehouse, so they probably just wanted to get rid of every single thing that they could have, I guess. It's just how trucking is, you never know, you know? Truckings like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. 
That's true. While we're getting out of here, where we've spent all this time, two days, no, well, yesterday and today, monkeying around with this, and it's, it's just three boxes. That's funny because one time I made a delivery to uh, Montana, and one of the stops had one mattress. And uh, ooh, what's going on here? That Mexican place is still busy, and it's it's the morning. They must serve breakfast there. Okay. Boy, I wish I could walk over to that Starbucks over there, but I don't think I'd make it across the freeway. get to the point where we're uh, pulling out our trucks, pulling guys out of their trucks for uh, stealing our parking places, then it's gone too far. Well, let's get out of here and head over and make our pickup. Over in Lancaster, Texas. And Lancaster is a, I call it the Fontana of trucking. It's where all the trucks are in Dallas. Not all, but many, most, lots, tons. It's where a lot of the truck stops are. Let's head over there and get our pickup and then we'll be on our way. I'd like to thank you for riding along, by the way. I'm Indiana Jack. Craziest thing, craziest thing, they're not accepting any uh, empties here because they're moving at this company today. So they want me to take this trailer over to some other place and then come back here and get the loaded trailer. I guess that makes sense, but it would have been good to know that first. You know, hey, drop off your empty somewhere else and then come back here and pick up the load. All right, let's get out of here. It's 10 miles away. And that's not that far, but I have to pay for the fuel to get over there. So, gotta do a big giant U-turn here. Let's head over to that uh, new location and drop off this empty and then we're going to come back here and get our loaded trailer. Alright, we're getting rid of this empty. Gotta go back over to the place where we were, 15 miles away, and get the uh, actual trailer picked up. Boy, it 
was tough finding this place. It took me over the neighborhoods where churches and schools were. The address is correct on all the maps, but the actual location where you come into the building is way a mile away on a different street. So. They're never going to fix it, so trucks are always going to be going to the residential neighborhood that's on the other side, because that's what the address is. This is a much bigger warehouse they have here. And, uh, so I imagine I'll be coming here quite often. And when I came in right up here, they don't have a guard shack yet. It's just two guards that are chatting. And I went right by them. I didn't know that I should stop there because they were chatting. Had someone been out there and told me to stop, I would have stopped. So they ch both chased after me in their cars and they're with the lights shining and everything. I think I have to sign out here. Now he's gonna go over there probably and try to park in the middle of the fuel island or the driveway. No, he's leaving. With his tail between his leg, give him, uh, give him a hand, ladies and gentlemen. I see things like that parking situation probably about once a month. The ones that just I see. It really is parking wars out here to try to find parking places. That guy was willing to cut off that other guy just so he could get in there and get that parking space. This guy I know, he claims that he was in Amarillo at the Petra there. He was backing into a space similar to what we just saw. And another guy actually ran this truck into his truck to block him from getting in the space. So my friend got out of his truck. He pulled the guy out of the truck and beat him up right in the parking lot. This is what he said. And then he said, in this red Peterbilt was backing into this space and that's the space over there and then this white Volvo barged in from around the other side and is trying to steal his parking space and now this good Samaritan is helping Telling him that the other, see now the Peterbilt's trying to continue his back in. Yeah, see now the Good Samaritan saved the day. See the Volvo snuck in from over, he ran over the scale. That's what we have to deal with out here. So now the world is good. <laughs> the red, uh, the red Peterbilt gets his space and continues his back in. So the award goes to the Good Samaritan from the Bible, over there for saving the day. Ah, the trucking life. <laughs>